Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game or card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Samurai Brothers by Carrie King. And it is a two to six player game. It takes about 30 to 60 minutes to play, 10 and up, and has 189 cards in it. And in the game, you're basically going to be building a dojo. You'll be gathering things like a samurai and sensei. You're also going to get your own little ninjas, whether they be baby, elite, or legendary. Gather your heirlooms and begin to fight in an epic take that battle. Now, the way the game works is pretty simple. You're going to be utilizing heirlooms if you want. Then you'll have the opportunity to use a special bonus action, which is their sensei. And then finally, you'll either be playing down samurai or you're going to be using action cards, which are going to cost samurai to do damage to your opponents. And the cards that you're doing damage with, of course, are going to be less expensive than the amount of damage they deal. Thusly, it provides the reason to attack them. And you're trying to defeat their samurai. Now, of course, they're going to have barriers and ways to try and protect their samurai, whether it be their dojo guards or whether it be other additional samurai they have, and even sometimes their heirlooms will help them by healing them up. But if you can get them down to zero, they are going to be out of the game. And when you knock somebody out specifically, you're going to get stuff in, in your hand, whether it be their cards as well as their different types of heirlooms and different warriors. And then you are going to simply pass and the next player is going to get to go until there's only one samurai warrior left. And if you are the main samurai, Samurai brother with the main dojo you're the winner of the game but I'll show you down below what comes in the game the different components basically how to play around and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review for the game so here we have the Samurai Brothers card game, and I went ahead and pulled out all the components for the game so you guys can have a good look at them. As you can see, there is just a ton of cards here, and then it's going to come with these little tokens here, which may or may not look like this, but they're going to be used as health track markers for the Samurais themselves. Now the way it works is you're going to be getting different samurai, uh, Samurais, you're going to be getting different Senseis, as well as Heirlooms, and these guards here, which will protect you and be able to counterattack your opponent. There's also two sets of different types of cards. You're going to have the ninjas here, and then you're also going to have the action cards. When you're playing with three or less players, you're simply going to be using the standard deck of action cards, and when you play with more, then you're going to incorporate these cards, which are just additional action cards that have a little throwing star at the top right, but they'll be put into the action decks so that there's more cards available for more players. There are different types of ninjas. Ninjas are going to vary in three different types, whether they be baby elite or whether they be legendary and then they're also going to have a unique amount of health and they're going to have an element and those elements will be useful in certain costs in the game and everybody is going to start the game by simply choosing in a draft snake-like fashion so it'd be like me you bill bill you me me you bill and it'd be, go back and forth Based on the number of players, everybody's going to get one samurai, a certain number of guards, a certain number of heirlooms, and then also they're going to be getting a sensei. After you've went ahead and gathered the specific cards, so let's just go ahead and say we were playing a let's say a two player game, just to make it pretty simple. Everybody is going to end up getting three guards, three heirlooms, one sensei, and one samurai in the draft. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the sensei on the bottom, you're gonna put the samurai on top, and then on each side, you're going to have your heirlooms and your guards. And the reason why you're going to do that is because you're gonna be placing down ninjas at the bottom. I'll go ahead and move these extra action cards now, and I'm going to go ahead and place these ninjas back into this main deck here. Every player is also going to then draw seven cards from this ninja deck to start the game off with, four, five, six, and seven. And the game is pretty much gonna be ready to go. So every single player should have a starting setup like this, unless you're playing a game that is going to have more players, in which case you're basically going to just divvy up the heirlooms and the guards equally, and everybody is going to simply have one samurai and one sensei throughout the game. I'll go ahead and set this up for two or three players then I'll go ahead and bring it down below specifically and show you how a round or so is played of the game Samurai Brothers. Voila! Two players for Samurai Brothers. And so basically how it works is they got the Samurais, you got the Senseis, each player is going to have their three heirlooms and guards. And like I said, there's uh, rules that will explain the game. I have the big boy versions and it'll tell you here 
how to do the draft, as well as what you're going to need for each player. But basically all you need to know is that everybody's going to get heirlooms and guards based on the fact that there's six players. So in a three-player game, everybody would get uh, two of these, right? In a six-player game, everybody would get one of them, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, I also went ahead and put these senseis over here. These guys are going to be out of the game, but they can be brought back or switched out or exchanged when people steal them. However, samurais here, these guys are not going to be used anymore. You only need one ever, and if your samurai goes away, so do you. So we'll go ahead and remove those completely from the game. Whenever anything like this or like this goes away, so it would go over here because it can be switched out or regained based on certain action cards in the game. And because the way you win this game is by either defeating all of the samurai or by gathering all of the heirlooms. So if this player here were to gather these three, that's another way to win the game. But if this player just simply defeats this player, he would gain certain things from this player and also be the last samurai left anyway, which would make him win the game. Now, we're pretty much ready to go. We have our seven cards, and they're all going to be starting from this deck here. This is the deck of Ninja. And you're just gonna simply draw from there, but make sure you shuffle both of these decks. Now I've got Hallie helping me. She's got her hand of ninja cards here, and I've got my hand of ninja cards. And the way it works is to begin the round, she will start. And the first two rounds of the game, you cannot, uh, you can draw action cards at the end of the round, but you cannot play them. We're just simply going to be playing ninjas. So there's the heirloom phase, which means that she can choose to use one of these heirlooms. And the way they work is once they're tapped, they're used and they can't be used again unless a card says that they untap, which is usually going to be a steal of some type. Uh, some of them are, all of them are very, very powerful, but none of them will untap otherwise. This says untap all your temple guards and draw to a full hand of cards. Uh, this one is heal a samurai to full strength or heal samurai to full strength and draw to a full hand of cards. That's actually really good. That'll make your samurai get healed to full. So if you don't want to use these, you don't want to tap one of these guys here, you'll move on to the next phase, which is the sensei phase. And basically each sensei is going to have a unique ability. Uh, as well as the ability to place one ninja from your hand into your dojo. And this specific one here says that you can add what is it, the top ninja from the ninja deck and you can place it into your dojo if you didn't want to play a ninja from your hand. And so she did, but she got a baby ninja, which probably isn't the greatest, uh, but it's a luck-based specific sensei. Now the next phase is going to be the action phase. She takes, she gets to take two actions and the three different combinations are this. She can either A, play two ninjas from her hand into her dojo, which is the only thing she can do for the first two rounds, or she can play one ninja and an action card from her hand, as long as she pays the cost for the action, or she can pay, play two different action cards from her hand, provided she pays the cost. But first round, she's only able to place two samurai, or two ninja, I should say, into her dojo. And her dojo is anywhere down below. Having as, many samurai, having as many ninjas as you can in the dojo is going to help you. There's no limit to the amount of ninjas you can have. At this point, she's going to then draw back up to seven cards. And she can choose from either deck if she'd like. But remember, she cannot play actions until the third round. It's my turn. I'm going to pass up the heirloom phase. I'm going to go ahead and go to the sensei, which says I can exchange one temple guard with one in exile, but there isn't one, or I can assign a ninja from my hand into play. And I will. I'm going to play the legendary ninja forest scavenger. Then I'm going to go ahead and play two more. Yet another legendary ninja dragon warrior and a legendary ninja turbine. Wow, got a lot of legendaries there. Then, end my turn, I'm going to go ahead and draw two from this side and one from over here. Callie's up, up now, and this is her second round. Speed it in along, ignores this, go ahead and plays one of those from her hand as opposed to from the deck. Great, and then she can play two more ninjas. There you go. That's my dog for you. After that, draws back up to seven. My round, skipping this. Going to go ahead and play one of these guys here. Then I'm going to go ahead and play two more. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and draw one of these guys here and two more actions. Now we're on the third round. So this is where we can actually start playing action cards, in which case Callie will begin once again. It's the same thing, heirloom phase. Don't want to use any of those yet. These are very powerful. So we use a sensei from the top of the deck. Good choice. An elite ninja. Not so bad. Now, she can play action cards if she wants. And there are different choices. You can steal things, you can attack players, and you can also block players from doing certain things. This is a baby attack. Basically, it's going to cost 
three health from the cards down below here, or it will cost two ninja babies with the same element. And this is two baby ninjas with the same element. Thusly, she's paid the cost. Let's go to the discard. And six damage is going to be dealt to me. And the way damage works is pretty simple. I can go ahead and choose to remove ninjas from my little area in the dojo here to pay for the health costs. So I can do a four and I could do two babies for six. I could also use my guards here. And I could also use my samurai. Whenever anything takes damage in this game, regardless of how much it is, that will simply go to the discard pile. Even if I only have this little temple guard left, it has 12 health. If it took one damage, I have to send it to the discard pile. So beware that when you choose to allocate damage, if you allocate damage, try and use the full amount if possible. And if not, you can always use your samurai to suck up some of the brunt because this is the only character that can actually take damage and it go down and you still be okay. Your character has to actually hit that zero mark or the surrender marker in order to lose the game. So we'll go ahead and I'll spend four, five, and six. So it costs me a little bit more than what she had to pay. And this will go to the discard pile and something else will happen actually. I'm gonna go ahead and counterattack. And these guys are basically ninjas, but they have an ability to counterattack. Like heirlooms, they tap. And when they tap, they are going to do damage by half of their health. So this counterattack will be for two on Kali. And she'll have to get rid of a ninja that it's going to cost two. So that elite ninja will go. What's interesting too is she can counter a counter if she like. She can go ahead and choose one of these guys to tap. And she can do damage to me again. So she's got a six there. She taps for three. I have to choose a character. Now I'm stuck. I can do three damage to my monk. Or I can take three damage on one of my four health samurais, which means I'm losing a little bit there. Or I have my, this is my temple guard fire, and I can go ahead and get rid of this. But I'm still going to have one more damage left over, which is going to hurt me here, or I can do it here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy here. He's going to go over here into the exile area, or the place that can come back into play. And I'll take one damage on my samurai monk with a total of three. I could choose to keep going with countering a countering a countering a counter, but I'm not going to. That'll be it for me. She can take her last action. All right, what is she going to do? Does she want to play another samurai or does she want to play an action card? She's going to steal a guard. Now the cost to steal a guard is going to be half of the guard's health and she's paying six and I have 12 health guard. I can check my hand to see if I have anything to stop her from doing that and I don't. So she would just simply take my guard and untap it if it was tapped and then this would go to the discard pile. And the game basically just continues going like that. It'd be my turn and I'm gonna start doing attacks to her, uh, hopefully reducing the amount of ninjas she has, getting through to her past her guards, and then finishing her samurai off and defeating her. Or just stealing her heirlooms. There are a ton of different cards in here that let you do things like stealing a sensei, stealing guards, stealing heirlooms. So I have all the thief runs. And of course we have defenders. So if I were to steal an heirloom, she could play this card for free and stop me from doing so. So there are cards that can prevent that from happening. The last thing which I didn't really talk about all that much is the fact that every samurai has a unique ability, which I didn't really do in the game. But this one here decreases all, all initial attacks costs by one. So all my attacks cost one less. And then hers is it increases all initial attacks by one damage. So they they kind of are similar but different in different ways. So more damage to me, it costs less damage, less health for me to do damage to her. Regardless, though, that's basically how you play the game Samurai Brothers. Regardless of how many players you have, you get all the heirlooms or defeat all the samurai and you win the game. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. Samurai Brothers is a take that card game, but it also has tableau management. You're going to be placing down your temple, as well as having your little dojo area where you're going to be having your ninjas move around and fight each other. And it's interesting because your ninjas are your health, but they're also going to be your cost to paying to do damage to your opponent's health. And all of the attack cards are going to require less of a cost from you in order to do more damage to your opponent, which is what incentivizes doing damage to another player. So the cost of maybe two elite ninjas, which could be up to six health, the elite attack would do somewhere about 12 damage to your opponent, thusly reducing their health to fairly low. Uh, there's also going to be the unique aspect of the heirlooms. These are one-time use abilities that are very powerful. Once they're used, they're turned, and they can't be used again. But wait, when you steal an heirloom from somebody else, you can then untap that and then be able to go ahead and utilize it. Untap, unturn. I don't know. I think Wizards has that mon monetized or something. We'll see. <laughs> we also have these different tower guards or temple guards here. 
Uh, they all have the same functionality of basically a ninja, but they have the ability to counterattack. They function like an heirloom in the fact that they turn and then they're going to do half of their health as damage to the end opponent. It's a good way to kind of counteract somebody else's cost and thusly be able to come at them later. This is an aggressive style game. You have to be aggressive in this game. If not, it can be a turtling match and turtling matches are not fun. They take too long. And I like the idea of incentivizing even more ways in order to make sure players don't do that. When you're playing a three player game and player A is hitting player B and B is hitting A and then C is sitting there just dropping ninjas down forever. There is less incentive for that player who's not being attacked to do anything to the players who are attacking each other and just simply mass and mass a stock. So you have to actually go back and forth and try and find ways to work together as two players to deal with another player. Uh, and that's probably my only critique of the game is the fact that I'd want to see ways to increase the speed of the play because this game feels like a very quick game, but it can be pushed into a longer match due to other players simply just dropping as much as they can, not being targeted. And of course, one player's it's very difficult to kill or to defeat another player simply as one player because that player can start getting back into the game whether they're using heirlooms or the other player that's not that's kind of building and turtling is attacking you so you have to kind of manage the social aspect of this game uh, regardless though there is a ton of beautiful artwork in the game all of the different ninjas have unique little types of artwork whether they're baby elite or legendary with all the different types of symbols and uh, the different the different like fire and water and ice and all that kind of stuff is used but mainly just for a couple attack things it's very simple which makes it very easy for a player to understand how the, you would utilize the different elemental uh, symbols on the ninja cards the samurais are actually pretty easy to forget their abilities if you're not remembering them like we did that a couple times on our first and second game we will decrease all attacks by one it's something that's just not sticking in your head i guess but regardless it's one thing i strongly suggest you remember to use because it's very very powerful the senseis they are different in nature and in my opinion i like the one that drops two babies down from the discard pile that's my favorite one i think it's the most powerful but they all have their uses and they all have a basic use of just simply playing a ninja from your hand into the dojo and then of course using your actions and the action cards are great you have cloak of invincibility which i believe is just one card in the entire deck it'll let you pass any defender uh to complete a steal so a defender is usually a card that stops you from stealing something and if you really want that thing you cloak it and then you get it uh, there are different attacks, right? You have stuff like the baby attack and the elite attack where they do more damage at more of a cost to you. It's very straightforward as to how they work, but going back and forth with the different action cards is a lot of fun. And there's of course blocking attacks. Blocking attacks is very powerful. Having those cards in your hand when you need them for a pinch is going to help out and protect you from taking damage. I would strongly probably suggest that the block attack should cost something because they're so useful. Uh, maybe if it says block eight attack, it's only going to cost you four instead or something like that, because that is another way for people to start turtling in the game. Uh, I love the heirlooms. I think they're super, super powerful. I love the different artwork. I really enjoy the take that nature of the game. This functions similarly to games like Munchkin, in which is a take that card game, where if you start pushing on one player too much and leaving yourself vulnerable, yes, you might defeat that player, but then somebody else is gonna target you. So be aware of that situation. Use your social abilities to the best that you possibly can. And of course, don't forget to add in the additional actions, which just provides more for the game when you are simply playing with more players and the game does feel different when you're playing with more players the game gets a little crazier a little more intense when you add in those extra players people start teaming up with each other i would always recommend playing games like these with more players in a party situation a family gathering or something like that because it intensifies the craziness that the game provides overall a fun little game definitely one of those things that i think people that like party games people like munchkin or flux or those type of feels to uh, those type of feelings in a game are definitely going to enjoy samurai brothers take a look down below in the description if you want to pick up the game and let's go ahead and hit the outro all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer video for the game samurai brothers two little caveats that i somehow missed there's two basic actions you can discard a samurai which you can then do damage 
Two of the player based on the samurai you discard, not samurai, ninja, I keep saying that. Ninja that you discard's health, and the other action is you can discard an action code to do a damage to an opponent, which is actually more useful than you might think. All right, guys, so go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're doing a giveaway tonight. This week is going to be up for Chartered the Golden, Go uh, Chartered the Golden Age, which plays a little bit like a choir. If you're interested, go ahead and hit up that giveaway, as well as taking a look at our live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 or 6.30 p.m. PST. We do tons of games, play games, just like this one on the stream. In fact, we'll be doing this one this week. Samurai Brothers, if you want to take a look, go ahead and join us at the Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Group, where you can win prizes from our live streams every week, every Wednesday. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, I look forward to battling it out with you next time. Let's get him. Get him. Fight, 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 fight.